Welcome everyone, my name is Limbic, and this is a survival guide. Today we are going to be playing a game by Level Up Labs known as Defender's Quest, Valley of the Forgotten. This game is a mix between a tower defense and an RPG. How does that work you may ask? Well, let's go ahead and jump into the game so that I can show you. I'm going to load up my save file here. I've basically beaten the game, but there's a lot of replay value to it, and I'll demonstrate that to you once we actually get into the game. Okay, welcome to Defender's Quest, Valley of the Forgotten. This is your main character, and you'll notice there's a bunch of orbs all over the map, and some of them have stars beneath them. So, red orbs are combat areas where you do all the fighting, and the stars basically mean the difficulty level. So you can see it goes from casual all the way to extreme, and the difficulty on each level increases massively as you increase, well, the difficulty. So you can see here on casual, there's only 13 waves, and the enemy levels are 20 to 31. However, on extreme, there's 19 waves, and the enemy levels are 50 to 57. So you can see that as you increase the difficulty level, the amount of enemies and the toughness of each enemy also increases massively. However, of course, you get better rewards. The blue orbs are town areas, and here is where I will explain how the RPG mechanics of the game work. So let's go ahead and start with the recruit mechanic. You can recruit different defenders in order to have access to them in your army. So let's go ahead and demonstrate this to you by recruiting an Ice Mage. So we'll click higher, and this Ice Mage is now level 1, and she has no equipment. And also, every time you recruit anyone, the price increases massively. So as you can see, it actually costs the exact same to recruit a healer than as it does to recruit an Ice Mage, but that last day's Ice Mage only costs us 11,000 scrap, and this one costs us 13,000. Now obviously, as I mentioned, I'm pretty far into the game, I've basically beaten it, so all of my classes are pretty full except for healer, and in my opinion, don't need that many healers anyway. So you can also buy weapons for each of your defenders, so let's buy a staff for our newly recruited Ice Mage. So we'll buy this um, steel shod staff, and we can go ahead and equip it onto this character. And I'm going to equip the best items onto the characters that are the highest level. So this is my army, you can see, let's look at Slack right here. He's level 21, he has a sword that gives him plus 40 strength, and he can't use any armor. If we take a look at his skills, this is the skill tree. So every character has their own skill tree. Berserkers all have the same skill tree, but say rangers have a completely different one, same as healers, same as knights, etc. So, you will notice all of these nodes. Now, circles are active abilities. So you can see this is double hit, this is an active attack that he uses, and then this is flurry, that's another attack. Squares are passives, so you can see this just adds 10% chance of critical to flurry, which is this attack here. Blue squares are defensive um, nodes, so you can see this gives him more regen, this gives him more evade, and then everything that's red are is an offensive node if that makes any sense. So let's take a look at the ranger here. You can see that she doesn't have any offensive, ab or she doesn't have any defensive abilities, excuse me, since she's going to be far more at range and far less vulnerable to attacks. If we look at a healer, however, you can see he has a lot more defensive abilities because he spends a lot of time healing, as you might imagine. But just because he's a healer doesn't mean that he doesn't have any offensive capabilities either. And you can kind of just see how this works. At the end of each battle, your characters will gain experience, so then once they level up, you get a point to spend in one of these nodes. Now my first gameplay tip for you is to, before you start adding additional points to nodes, make sure that you have at least one point in each of them. And the reason for that is, let's come back to the Berserker here. The first point you put into a node really gives you an extreme benefit compared to adding additional points. So, as you can see here, Madness. The first point I put into this gave him an extra 10% critical chance, but if I were to put an additional point now, it would only give him an additional 3%. So, in my opinion, it's much more efficient to make sure that you have at least one point in every single node to make sure that you get those extreme first tier benefits before you start leveling up any of the nodes further, if that makes any sense. Alright, so 
let's actually I forgot to do what I, we actually came here for so let's go ahead and equip the charlatan staff onto this character and then we'll equip our worst staff onto our least leveled character that'll be fine so just like you can buy weapons you can also buy armor different classes use different kinds of armor and of course you can sell anything that you are not making use of anymore so that's how the RPG mechanics work. Each of the defenders are basically towers that you use in this tower defense game, and then you give them different weapons and different armors and level them up to give them different skills. Alright, let's go ahead and demonstrate to you the combat. So let's battle here, and I think we'll go ahead and try to tackle the advanced level here. It's going to be quite difficult because the enemies go to level 33 to 40, and none of my characters are anywhere near that level, but I think that we can go ahead and give it a shot, and hopefully I don't embarrass myself on video here. Alright, so what are we looking at here? This is the actual tower defense gameplay mechanic. So here is your main character. This is what the enemies will try to reach. If they do reach your character, you will take damage, and as you might imagine, if you run out of HP up here, you die. The way you prevent the enemies from reaching you is by summoning defenders to hack them to bits before they reach you. So these are the four spawn points, and this is where the enemies will spawn out of and then start moving along to try and reach you. And you can see up here, this is the kind of enemy that will be coming at you, and then this icon here is where the enemies will be spawning out of. So I know that once this um, box reaches over here, the 0 to 16 waves, that 20 of these revenants will spawn out of this yellow asterisk and then start running along this path to try and get me. Now of course you might be wondering, well what's with this river? Some enemies can walk through water so you have to be careful of that, but if they can't walk through water they'll have to go all the way over here and then cross this bridge. So. A lot of the strategy of this game is figuring out where to put your defenders to make sure that they actually will cover all of the paths, and the more paths that enemies can come from, obviously the harder the game becomes. So let's go ahead and summon a ranger here, and I think I'll put her here, that seems pretty good to me. We got a lot of coverage of every single path the enemies could be coming from. Now, how did I summon this ranger? What did I have to spend in order to do that? I had to spend Psy, so as you summon characters, you have to spend this resource you have called Psy. And, you only have a limited amount of it. However, you recover Psy by killing enemies. So the longer the battle goes on, the more Psy you will have, and thus the more resources you will have to summon more defenders and make your defense stronger. What else can you spend Psy on? Well, you can spend it on boosting your character. So there's the level up mechanic outside of the game where you gain experience and put the points into the nose, and then there's a level up mechanic inside the combat called boosting. So if we boost this character, let's go ahead and boost her to level 5. You can see not only did she gain a ton of range, but she actually will now also be using these abilities here. Before, when she was only at level 1, she would only be using the basic shot. But once I boosted her to level 2, now she gains access to triple shot. At level 3, she gains access to rapid shot, etc, etc. And this is my second gameplay tip to you. A lot of people in tower defense games will tend to just summon as many defenders as they can and then they'll look at leveling up their towers. And in some tower defense games that actually works out well, but it does not in this game. The effectiveness of a boosted character is much more... Oh, that's a terrible sentence. Let's try that again. A boosted character is far, far more effective than a just level 1 character. In fact, I guarantee you that, say, this ranger now is far, far more effective than five level one rangers. All right, let's figure out where we shall put the rest of our um, heroes. I think we'll put our berserker here, just to make sure that he actually covers all of the incoming paths. If we do have to use this berserker, we're going to be in a little trouble since it's so close to our defender, but berserkers have really high damage, so hopefully we will be able to deal with that. All right, what else shall we put down? I think we'll put down a healer. Now, Enemies can actually attack your defenders in this game. So having a healer to make sure that you heal them up so that they don't die is always a good idea. If your defenders do die, you lose all of the Psy. You can resummon them, so if, say, this ranger died, I would be able to just put her back out, but she would be back at level 1 and I would have to spend all the Psy that I spent on leveling her up to get her to back to get her back to where she was. And that was really expensive, so obviously we don't want to allow that to happen. 
Alright, so I think that we've got a pretty good setup here. Let's go ahead and just put the game on times 4 which, as far as I'm concerned, there's no reason really to put it on any slower speed than that, just because uh, if you ever need to think for a little bit, you can just simply pause by pressing the spacebar. So you can see our ranger here, she's totally going to town, she's destroying everything that comes into her path. This is the power of a fully boosted character. Let's go ahead and summon another ranger, and let's put her down here, and hopefully I will be able to demonstrate to you just how lame a level 1 character is compared to a fully boosted character. So as you can see, she's just doing pitiful damage. If it weren't for this ranger here, she would not be able to kill these enemies on her own. Alright, so as you can see, as I mentioned, when you kill enemies, you start to gain Psy. We know that we have some really scary minions coming at us from this point, so I'm going to go ahead and make sure this ranger is actually boosted, and hopefully they will be able to take care of them. These are really tough, scary enemies. As you can see, even the fully boosted character is having a little trouble dealing with them. Hopefully it shouldn't be that big of a problem, though, which it looks like it won't be. So, of course... Actually, our ranger is almost dead. Let's see if we can get a healer out here to save her before she dies. Because obviously I've spent tons of Psy boosting her up, and if she dies, then that would be very sad. So, as I mentioned before, enemies will attack your defenders. Now, why isn't Leska attacking these characters? It's because they're not actually in her range. Rangers cannot attack at melee, they can only attack in this white circle. And in fact, the little white circle slash boxes always indicate range for characters. So we know that both of these characters are in the range of this healer, which is good. So that's what the um, white squares slash boxes mean. And unfortunately we did lose our ranger there, which is very sad because now it's going to cost us quite a bit of side to replace her. And our healer is actually getting beaten up too, but fortunately healers can heal themselves, so he should be able to survive. Now what is with these enemies? They actually have armor on them which makes them significantly more difficult to kill. Luckily, there is a way to deal with that. You can summon knights, and knights have a special ability called Armor Break, as you can see here. It will destroy the armor of your enemies. It won't destroy the armor on every hit, but it's always a good way to make the enemies far easier to deal with. Alright. So I guess we'll go ahead and demonstrate the rest of the characters we have available to us. How about an Ice Mage, which we recruited at the, the, at the start of this video. I think we'll put one here, just to make sure that she's covering both of these paths. Ice Mages have very short range, so there's no way I will be able to place one on this map covering all four paths, so that's fine. And we'll boost her up, just to make sure that she's actually useful. As I mentioned many times already, a level 1 character is pretty much useless. So you always want to prioritize boosting them over having more defenders. So as you can see, she's doing a pretty good job. The nice thing about Ice Mages is that they slow enemies that they hit, which means that they can usually be very effective against enemies that are very fast, but have very low amount of health, because they also do AoE. So a lot of times in this game, you will be thrown at um, you will be thrown just hordes and hordes of small but fast enemies, and Ice Mages are a very good answer to that. Alright, things are not looking very good for us, are they? The enemies are starting to get very close to our um, librarian, who I named Limbic. So, there is actually another thing we can do about that, and this is the third way you can spend Psy, which is on these spells. So, you have spells up here that you can cast at the expense of Psy, and a lot of them can be very effective. Now your librarian levels up just like your defenders and you get to choose which spell you're going to focus on, which spell you're going to put that skill point into. So lightning, for example, is actually pretty useless for me because I've ignored it when leveling up. I haven't put any skill points into it. Dragonfire, however, I have put a lot of skill points into and it should be very effective. So let's go ahead and try that out here and let's see if it kind of gets us out of trouble. It doesn't look like it did anything here because the game is paused. However, if we resume, you can see that that really helped us out and saved our um, behinds there. Alright, let's go ahead and summon... Uh, how about we summon... No, we'll summon a Berserker here. And we'll boost him up. We'll make sure that we have a healer covering this Berserker because we don't want him to die. And we'll boost this healer up as well. And yeah, as you can see, 
even though we have the healer on him, our Berserker was still taking a lot of damage. So imagine if there was no healer on them. Our healer there just died. The game can become quite difficult, especially in the later stages. Okay, so, however, <laughs> right after I talk about the difficulty, it's very clear that we've actually won. And here's my... Here's another gameplay tip for you. If you see that you've already won the battle, now is when you should start summoning as many defenders as possible. And the reason is because defenders who are in the battle gain 100% of the experience. However, defenders who are either dead or were never summoned only get half the experience. So we've run out of Psy now, but there's actually a way that we can deal with it. You can actually recall characters in this game, and you get a lot of Psy back from that. So you can see if we were to recall this hero, we, this healer, we would get 337 Psy back. So let's go ahead and do that. Oh, and unfortunately the game ended. <laughs> I was a little late there. Just know that you want to be summoning as many defenders as possible when you know that you've already won in order to make sure that they all gain 100% experience. So you can see these knights and then these ice mages only gained half the experience from that battle because they weren't summoned. So that is a tip to make sure that you really keep your characters nice and leveled so that they are actually more useful. So as you can see here, I put one point into Inspire for this... Um, healer because he just unlocked that skill and as I mentioned I want to make sure that every node has at least one point into it before I start adding points to nodes that already have a point in it if that makes any sense. So let's take a look at this ice mage. I'm going to put one point into each of these nodes to make sure that you know her skills are actually to make sure that for one she can actually use all of the skills available to her and for two that she gains those really nice passive benefits from just the first point. So that's pretty much how the game is played. Sometimes if you complete harder difficulties you'll get bonus items, sometimes you'll get just um, bonus scrap or bonus experience. So it's a really nice way to keep the gameplay varied. So we'll go ahead and equip the sword onto one of our characters and make sure that all of our characters stay updated with their equipment things are looking good and we'll go back to the map and you can see that now we've actually filled in this star because we completed that battle. Alright so just a recap of my gameplay tips for you. Make sure that when you level up your characters you put at least one point into every node before you start adding additional points and leveling up skills that way. Favor boosting characters over just having a horde of defenders and here's another thing that I haven't mentioned yet. If you ever get stuck while playing through the game, like let's say you get to this node here and you just can't win the battle because it's just too hard. Go ahead and go back to some older battles and complete them on higher difficulty. This will help you level up your characters, it will help you gain more items and more scrap so that you can go to the shops and recruit more soldiers and get even more items. Alright everyone, my name has been Livic, thank you very much for watching. This has been Defender's Quest Valley of the Forgotten by Level Up Labs. You can buy this game on Steam for $15, the link will be in the description. Thank you very much for watching, and I will see you all next time.